Over the following years, Amazon would hire hundreds of thousands of workers and become the largest private jobs creator in the country. At the fulfillment centers, Bezos experimented with new techniques and technologies to boost productivity. Willingness to experiment is the key to being able to do new things. So we do, you know, hundreds of experiments every day in our fulfillment centers to get a little bit better, kind of like incremental invention. When a company called Kiva perfected a warehouse robot, Amazon bought the whole company. Amazon has acquired Kiva Systems. Uh, they make shipping robots. It helped transform the work environment in Amazon's warehouses. When I first showed up at Amazon in 1999, I led our global operations team. Jeff Wilkie created the Amazon Fulfillment Center system and is one of two CEOs under Jeff Bezos. As we've added 200,000 robots in that same time frame since 2012, we've added 300,000 people in our fulfillment centers. So what happens is the robots change the work, so they allow us, people don't have to walk as far, which is a complaint that we've heard in the past. They make the job safer. They make them higher quality because we present a smaller set of options to, customer, to, uh, to employees. And that's all good for customers, and it's good for employees. But at the same time, complaints have persisted. People who've worked in warehouses for decades say this is different. This is not the same. We're here today because we want to make sure that these workers know about their rights in the workplace, especially around heat. Shahari Arkazji is an advocate for warehouse workers in the San Bernardino, California area, an Amazon hub with 10 fulfillment centers and over 15,000 employees. Because of the way that Amazon operates, because of the way that they set their rates for productivity, it's a lot harder work physically, but also psychologically. We sat down with a group in San Bernardino who'd recently worked at Amazon. When they first got here, I thought it was exciting. Like for me, I was thinking maybe I could find a, a place where, you know, I'm gonna set roots of, of a good job, you know, move up in, in place. But after being there for a while, I was like, there's no way. It's like, okay, this is where I could probably make a career. But once you work there for a certain amount of time, it's just like, it's just not realistic how they expect you to work, you can't. Like dozens of workers we've spoken to around the country, they say they've struggled to keep up with the rate Amazon expected them to pick and pack items. How realistic are the rates that they're giving you? I mean, what's not realistic at all? Not, not realistic? No. There's n absolutely no way to make rate. You know, you gotta find little ways to, to cheat it. Because once you hit rate, by the end of the week, they raise it, they bump it up again. Because they start saying, hey, people could, could hit those rates, could hit those numbers. Hey, let's push them a little harder. Every week, it seemed like it was going up. You have security cameras right behind you at all times uh, that are looking at you 24-7. Um, and if you don't meet standards or the rates, you're out the door. You're just disposable. Every worker has a scanner at all times that basically track exactly where you're at. And they have a little blue line at the bottom of the screen, and it has, like, how many seconds that you have to have it done by the time it hits zero. And it puts you into panic mode. And pretty much you can't talk to people. You can't be in the same aisle as them. You just constantly have to sit there scanning like a robot all day long. If they catch you not scanning, you get a write-up. And what they're doing is they're producing this massive data that they are using to be able to analyze the entire workforce. We're not treated as human beings. We're not even treated as robots. We're treated as part of the data stream. It's the incentive at any warehouse on any assembly line to get the most out of any worker, you know, to make rates, to, to be as efficient as possible, to be as productive as possible. So I don't see exactly what's different about Amazon as opposed to any other warehouse. Amazon is the cutting edge. Other warehouses are starting to adopt these technologies. Other companies are definitely interested in doing what Amazon is doing data collection could become basically the standard for all workers, and that there's ne you're never good enough. You're never able to keep up. Amazon told us work rates are not based on an individual employee's performance, 
and that the scanning devices workers use are not for tracking people, but inventory, a common practice in the warehouse industry. We've talked to workers around the country, both current and former workers. They've described the pace of work as being really grueling. In the early thinking about rates and how far you could push human beings in terms of their productivity, what was the thinking about that? Well, obviously, if the rates are too high, you're not going to have people showing up for work. So we have 600,000 people at the company. Most of them are in the fulfillment centers. And uh, they, they uh, come to work every day. They stay for years. These are considered great jobs in the hundreds of communities where we have fulfillment centers all over the world. And in the U.S., we have almost every state has an operation in it. And people come to work because these are great jobs. They're safe. We pay double the minimum wage, the national minimum wage. We have terrific benefits. The benefits for the folks that work on the floor are the same benefits that my family has access to. Our family leave is like 20 weeks. So uh, the rates are set so that we can accomplish what we need to, which is get orders to customers in a, a reasonable time and in a high quality way. And that creates a workplace that people want to come back to, and they do. Amazon wouldn't tell us how long fulfillment center workers stay on the job or how often they're injured. But workers we spoke to say the rates are higher than other warehouses and that the company rebuffs attempts to unionize. We do not believe unions are in the best interest of our customers, our shareholders, or most importantly, our associates. This is a clip from a video the company says it used in the past to teach managers about employees' rights and labor laws. The most obvious signs would include use of words associated with unions or union-led movements like living wage or steward. Early on, Amazon took a position to, to basically be anti-union. Why was that decision made? Uh, I don't think we made the decision to be anti-union. We just feel that all of the things that, that unions would, uh, would want to, uh, to get us to do, we've already done. What, what about setting rate, though? Do you not see that there's a little bit more leverage in the hands of management in this scenario than there would be in a unionized environment? I don't know. It's hard to speculate on that. But, but I do think that we have the obligation to set rates that are, again, going to encourage people to seek these jobs and deliver for customers you know, what we've promised. What would you say to someone, though, who's, who's worked in, in your fulfillment centers that feels as though there's been, that, that humans are increasingly being treated like robots? Because it's something that we've actually heard, and I don't sense it's hyperbole. Well, th that's not the experience that, uh, that I had in setting it up or that I've seen. It's, pro it's certainly true that, that these jobs are not for everybody. And there, there may be people that don't want to do this kind of work. Amazon executives also stress the company has become an industry leader in training its workforce for career advancement. We just announced a pledge uh, recently to spend $700 million to upskill, which is basically creating career opportunities for people, 100,000 of our employees. We pay 95% of tuition to go to school to college to get a skill that isn't about Amazon, that's about creating options for the employees. And I would expect those people to take advantage of that, work for us for a couple of years, and then go do something that they would much rather do, and that's okay. There'll be people that will hear what you all are saying, and they'll say, well, you signed up for physical labor. A job is a job. There were benefits and they're now investing $700 million to do retraining for other types of jobs. What's the real grievance? What is there to complain about? I actually used to think that way for a while. Whenever I, when I first started, whoever I heard complaints from, I was like, well, it was in the job description and, and you signed up for it. Uh, the part they don't talk about is the safety rules that you have to ignore to make great. It, it's not just you go in okay, and you, you do your job and that's it. So you're in, you're in a weird bind. It's incredibly hard to meet rate while following all the safety procedures. A complaint that we've heard from workers in terms of the sort of automation of their work as humans, some of them telling us that, yes, there are high safety standards in these fulfillment centers, but that in order to make rate, they're having to cheat the standard a little bit. Well, I would say that's not okay. So I, from the moment that uh, I arrived 20 years ago, I made it very clear to our operations teams that we will not compromise the safety of our employees to do anything else. 
So we have we have a culture that if if we are asking people to do something that is that that they have to do too fast to be safe, they can raise their hand and say this isn't right and and we'll fix it.